Championship. The table, they say, never lies, and United finished nine points clear of second-place Chelsea. Away from home, however, the Red Devils picked up just five league wins all season, fewer than they managed in Europe. You might say, then, that the title was won at Old Trafford. It's, for me, the best stadium around to play in, um, the atmosphere. Um, and I think the biggest thing at Old Trafford is that a team can go one, two, two goals up against us at home. But still, if they walked in at half-time, two and up against us, they know that there's a chance that we will come back and probably, if not draw again, win the game. And that's the belief that we've got, and that's the belief that our fans have got, and that stadium, that's the belief that that stadium holds. So for any team that come there, they know that it's, it's a long way, isn't it? The statistics stack up. On five different occasions at the Theatre of Dreams last season, United struck a winning goal in the final... Goals of speciality! Seven minutes to go! And away from home too, despite some indifferent results along the way, they displayed that never-say-die attitude, now a hallmark of Sir Alex Ferguson's dynasty of title-winning sides. Which is why trying to pin down a single decisive victory or one influential player simply doesn't wash with United's 32-year-old centre-back. Over the course of the whole season, you can look at the Blackpool game. We were two down there, came back. Um, there's, there's been so many different games during the season where you think yourself, Aston Villa away, 2-0 down, we come back and get a point there after for 80 minutes looking like we're a second division team uh, for our best player. But more importantly, I think that the whole squad played their part when there were players out injured or suspended. Players came in and always done what they meant to do in a Man United shirt and that's perform. Ferdinand himself needed cover when a calf injury suffered in February ruled him out for two months. 21-year-old Chris Smalling deputised, featuring in all 11 games that Rio missed and coped admirably as United extended their lead at the top of the table and defeated Marseille in the Champions League last 16. Frustratingly for Ferdinand, missing games through injury has become a more frequent occurrence in recent campaigns. It kills your season, really, but, I mean, this season I've played, I think it was about 19 games on the run then I got through the Christmas period which was the defining point for me really in terms of proving to myself that I could maintain a level of fitness but when you're out you've got to draw on experience and of getting through them periods and um, make sure you tunnel your vision in terms of in trying to get back rather than thinking about all the negative stuff. Having recovered, Ferdinand was thrust straight back into the thick of things playing both legs of the victorious Champions League quarter-final against Chelsea. That success propelled United into a fourth European semi-final in five years. But on the domestic front, too, it was a victory with gigantic ramifications. When champions Chelsea visited Old Trafford on May the 8th, they trailed the league leaders by a slender three-point margin with goal difference level. They were ten league games undefeated and ready to pounce. We always seem to take it to the wire or just make it last an extra game longer than it should. But we were confident, I mean, I think a big moment was the Champions League quarter-finals against Chelsea when we beat them convincingly. Um, and to take that into a league game was huge for our confidence because before that they probably had the edge over us in, in head-to-heads with them over the last few years. Um, and they probably would have been a bit more confident. But I think the Champions League game where a belief came that we, we at that point of the season, were better than them. United won that crunch league game 2-1 and so needed just a point from their final two games to cross the T's and dot the I's. A 1-1 draw at Ewood Park followed a week later. Cue the celebrations. First of all, it's obviously a great day whenever you win the league. It's a fantastic feeling. It's sometimes you, if you're being plucky or choosy, you'd love to do it at home, but we received it at home, which was a bonus anyway. But to do it there um, with the fans that travel all over the country and all over the Europe with us was great as well. And, um, and I think we owed Blackburn one as well from the year before. I think the result we had there the year before, where we drew, I think we drew 0-0. That was really the point where we probably lost the league. Um, so it was nice to go back there and actually win it against them. For the fans in particular, knocking Liverpool off their perch was an achievement to savour. For the players, an immense sense of pride and satisfaction, but no need to brag. There's not been any banter between myself and any of the Liverpool players about it, but um, 
it's not really something that you 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 wind each other up about, if I'm honest. Um, the fans do, but where they're doing it, playing the games week in week out, and there's that little bit of respect between the players. It's just like when we beat Chelsea in the Champions League final. We met with England that just that week. Obviously, some Chelsea lads were there and, and United lads were there, and we didn't bring it up. I mean, a couple of their lads brought it up and just kind of broke the ice about it, but you wouldn't say something to rub anyone's nose in it. So that's not happened. But I mean, the banter with the fans and stuff is brilliant and it's great for them. I mean, it's took us a while to get to, to 19 and, and take over Liverpool um, in that sense. Away from the domestic game, Liverpool's five European Cups still trump the Red Devils' tally of three. And shortly after clinching the title, United travelled to Wembley to take on Pep Guardiola's all-conquering Barcelona in the Champions League final. On the night, the Catalans were sublime, outclassing United for the second time in three years. A glorious season ended with disappointment. Going into the game, we were all for it and we believed in what we were doing. Um, genuinely believed that we could win the game. Um, sometimes after a game, we've got to just say on the day we wasn't good enough. Um, we didn't perform on the day, we didn't play particularly well. We had a, a good spell in the first five, ten minutes. But as I said, you take it on the chin on the day, we, we just wasn't good enough on the day to compete with them. They were the better team. The defeat to Barcelona may be a painful memory for everyone at Manchester United, but setbacks are used as motivation for improvement. Time and again, the club has shown its remarkable appetite for a challenge, continually displaying the astonishing drive and fight that has brought 27 major honours in the last 25 years. Such resilience and hunger emanates from one inspirational source. It transpires from the manager. He's got a, a winning mentality. He wants to win all the time. And that transpires to the team. And then you have to have a certain amount of players that have been here for a while who can take that in and take that on board and then address that in the dressing room. And we've got that. As well as imparting that winning ethos on others in the squad, the more experienced players also help new signings settle in. Though Ferdinand believes each newcomer must be given room to adapt at his own pace. You don't impose yourself on, on young players that come into the club. You let them settle, you let them get in and find their feet a little bit. And then when they want to ask you questions or you feel you, you can give them a few pointers before games about certain players, then you do so. That's the way this club kind of works, really. I think we've got a lot of senior players, but we don't peck people's head. Uh, in terms of trying to f fill people with too much information. The manager's there and the coaching staff are there to, to, to give the players a, as much information as they can before games and the training on how to conduct themselves and how to play games. And we're just there as really the backup and buffers, really. One man making the transition from playing squad to coaching staff is Paul Scholes, who in May called time on his illustrious 17-year playing career, which brought 17 major honours. Those lucky enough to have played alongside him are in no doubt that he'll be sorely missed. For me, Scholes is probably one of the most enjoyable players that I've ever had the pleasure in playing on a football pitch with. Um, just to play behind someone like that who, who makes the game look so effortless and easy, um, does all the basic things uh, as good as you'd want in a player, um, and then does the things that are obviously a lot more difficult, as good as not better than anyone else. So um, to see someone, and someone play like that day in, day out, and I mean, when he told me he was he's retiring, I was like, whoa, like, you could still play for another two or three years easily. Um, but he wants to be involved in every game, and I appreciate that, and you have to understand that. And it, that's why he's been so successful in his career, because his desire is to always be the best and to take part in the big games and the best games in the season. And if he's not getting that, then he's called time on his career, but what a fantastic career he's had. Skulls on the lead. Sometimes you need maybe to have a bit more of a profile um, to, to be appreciated like that, but um, he's someone who'll go down as a great, definitely. Replacing greatness is no easy task, and with Edwin van der Sar and Gary Neville also choosing to end their playing careers this year, Ferguson has three voids to fill as he seeks to maintain United's domestic dominance over a chasing pack fortified by some impressive summer acquisitions. He's canny enough to know, however, that the club must move forward with a fresh injection of distinctive talent. As the manager's done before, he's never actually tried to replace like for like. He didn't try and replace Ruud van Nistelrooy with um, a similar player, he didn't try and replace Roy Keane with like-for-like, like. he didn't try and replace Beckham for like-for-like like player. 
And I think the same will be with Gary Neville, the same will be with uh, uh, Paul Scholes. Because um, where are you going to find a lot of Paul Scholes? You're not. So you're, you're better off searching for something totally different that will have us hopefully in time a similar impact. And judging by Ferguson's track record, he'll find a formula, make an impact and alter the history books for the good of Manchester United. The champions will take some stopping this season. That 19th title is already forgotten. They want number 20. They also want to settle the score with Barcelona. It's that sort of ambition that has given the very name of Manchester United such history, prestige and honour.